Okay, Six Hour Guy here. This video is gonna be about the removal, disassembly, and cleaning of the striker assembly in the P320. Um, I like to take mine out every now and then and clean it up really good. Um, there are problems associated with a dirty striker, such as um, late primer strikes and failures to fire and stuff like that. So um, I like to get all that stuff out of there. Carbon, oil, um, over time builds up inside there. Now, a couple things I use to do this is a Wheeler's Armors block. Um, this one has a little post right here, which is really helpful of getting the mainspring off of the striker um, and the little cups. This one here is a little bigger, um, too big for the 320 striker, so I took a razor blade and kind of whittled it down a little bit so my striker fit over there nice and snug. Um, you'll see how that works in a minute. I use a 90 degree magnetic pick, non-magnetic punch, um, chamber brush to clean out the striker cavity there, and then Q-tips to clean out as well um, as long as the or as well as the extractor guide rod hole there as well um, so let's get started first of all we're going to remove our slide from our grip module and set that aside and because we're doing the extractor as well i'll remove my barrel and guide rod just like that um, very simple this back plate's got to come off your striker's in behind there there's your striker right here um, and there's a little detent here that's spring-loaded. This is the extractor guide rod. So when we push this in, you can see it's spring-loaded. So what we'll do is we'll push it in, slide our back plate off. That'll come straight down and out. We'll set that aside, pull our striker assembly right out. We'll put that aside for a second. We can pull our extractor guide rod assembly right out. So this is the extractor pin that holds the extractor in, extractor spring, extractor guide rod. We'll set that aside. And if you just tap your slide on the side there, the extractor itself will fall right out. And we'll put that aside as well. So basically everything has been removed from the slide with the exception of the sights. Um, that's it, it's that simple. All right, so back to our striker. Um, there's eight or nine parts on here. Um, two of them are very small springs, okay? So we need to be very careful not to lose anything. Um, the hole on this end is what's gonna go over the post on this armor's block, just like that. And this is very helpful when putting this back together to get these little cups back on. These little cups right here, there's two of them, and they're in half. And what they do is they go around the striker and then the spring goes up over those, and that's what locks this main spring right on my striker. So to remove this, we're just gonna pull the spring down and let those cups fall out. These are those little cups. Two halves. We'll set those aside. Pull our main spring right off. Pull this right off our block. Let me set that aside. That's really all we need that for. The next step we're going to do is we're going to move our striker safety spring. Okay, this is our striker safety right here. This little lever that goes spring loaded. And there's a little spring, which is kind of hard to see. Right here, shaped like a V. It goes over a little post right here, this loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this spring down from underneath this lever, pull it down and out, and then that spring will come right out. Make sure you put your finger over it so that way it doesn't take off on you. So once we pull that down and out, now the tension's off of it. See how it's outside, that's striker safety. And then we can just pull it right off of there. That little guy right there. Don't lose it. We'll put that right over here. And now we'll remove our striker from the striker housing. And if this gives you difficulty, just move this lever up and down and kind of just move it around. It'll come right out. Keep this very still. Okay, there's a little spring still in there. Make sure it's not stuck to your 
striker if there's oil on this that little spring might stick to it and then you're pulling it off the table over your lap and it falls off and you didn't see it so what I do is I just tip it upside down give it a little tap and there's a little spring right there real small don't lose it and then our striker safety we can just pull our pull it right off of the housing there okay kind of like an L shape and then it's got a little leg that goes in through the housing housing and contacts the striker. So we'll put that aside there. Now we can clean all these parts up really good. Get all the carbon and oil and everything off of there. Um, you Ideally you want everything dry going back together. You don't want to use any lube. If you are persistent on using lube, um, one that people have recommended before is this Rem Dry Lube. Um, you kind of spray it on, let it evaporate off, and then it leaves kind of like a slick Teflon coating. Um, but it's not wet, nothing that oil and stuff can stick to. Um, so I'm going to clean up all those parts. And then on your slide here, the striker cavity, you can kind of put some bore cleaner in there and let it sit for a little while. And then use your bore brush, kind of move it around, break that stuff up, get it all nice and broken up. And then you can clean it all out with your Q-tips, cleaning patches, whatever you use to clean that out. Um, the cavity that the extractor goes in, Q-tip fits right through there. So you can clean that all up nice and good. Okay. So I'm going to take care of all that. And then when we come back, we'll do the reassembly. Okay. Now that we have all that cleaned up, we're going to put it back together. We'll start with our striker housing and our striker safety. Um, the safety, one end of it's going to go underneath. There's a little lip on this side. The other side has a hole going through it. So one end's going to go under the lip. One end's going to go through the hole. And it's going to go in there situated just like that. Okay. So under the lip and in the hole. Just like that. And our next step is to take that little spring. And we're going to insert it into the cavity right here. There's a groove inside here. Not where the striker goes. But on the side here. It goes inside all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to set that little this little spring here inside the beginning of that and then we'll either slide all the way down or we can use the striker to push it down in there so that's in there now we'll put the striker in just like that and then if it's spring loaded you know your springs in there properly if it's not spring loaded then you probably fell out or you lost it or whatnot um, so there you go now we're going to take our other little spring and we're going to put it right inside here. There's a little post right here. That little loop on the spring is going to go over this post. The shorter leg of the spring is going to go along the bottom here. There's a little ledge or lip that's going to capture it. And then the longer leg of the spring is going to go underneath the safety lever. Okay. So here's the little spring. It's going to go in there just like that. We have the shorter leg here, the longer leg here, and the loop. So what I usually do is put the loop over that post, hold it down with my finger. This longer leg is above the lever, so I can move this up and get it down inside that one ledge. And then I'll use a pick and I'll pull down the longer leg and slide it underneath the lever itself. So this takes patience. Okay, so I'm going to use my magnetic pick and get this situated on here. This usually goes either really quick or it takes quite a while. So don't get impatient. So what I'm doing is I'm holding that loop on the post. I'm getting the longer leg. Trying to get that longer leg over the lever. That way the shorter lever can get inside that bottom lip. There you go. 
I got lucky there. I went pretty quick. So you can see the spring here. The top part's underneath this lever. The bottom part is in the bottom channel there, and it's over the post. And then you can kind of do push your striker in just a little bit. You can see if the spring is doing its job, which it is. Okay. So there's that part. Next, we're going to put the main spring on with the cups. So this is your main spring. It can go on either way. And then your cups have a ridge right here along the top. There's three little nubs that stick out. Okay, there's gonna be four total. This is a half of one, this is a half of one, that's a whole one. So when you put both halves together, there's one, two, three, four. The spring comes up and captures underneath those nubs, okay? And what we wanna do is the inside of the spring, the cup is gonna go just like that, inside the spring, okay, and capture the spring. And where that goes on your striker is, you can see it narrows down here right in the middle. That's where the two cups will go against it. The spring will go over the cups. and That'll keep it where it needs to be. So we're gonna put this back on our armor's block. This is where the armor's block is worth its weight in gold because this is a little tricky without it. Can be done, but just make sure you don't um, release the spring until you know the cups are in there properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the spring as far as I can. Insert half the cup. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. Those little notches or nubs on the cup go up. Just like that. You can see how the spring is over the cup. The cup is down inside the spring, and then it's in the narrow part of the striker, which is trapping the cup where it needs to be. Okay, and then we'll just make sure this all works. We'll put our striker in just a little bit. Make sure our lever works, which it does. There you go, good to go on that. So now this is all cleaned up because we already cleaned it all up. All our other pieces are all cleaned up. So we're gonna put our extractor in first. Um, it goes just like this. Your extractor pin has got, it's like half of it's missing on the end there, okay? The longer part faces out, okay? Because what happens is it goes in and it captures the guide rod. See how it goes right on there like that? Keeps it from falling out because it can't get by there. All right, so this only goes in one way. The claw faces in. Slip it in through the side just like that. And then there's a little hole here. You can actually see when you put that guide rod in with that longer half facing straight up, just like this. Slide it in the hole. And that'll capture the extractor. It's thundering and lightning here right now. Sorry about that. Uh, it does stick out a little bit, so that's normal. We're gonna put our striker in, just like that. Then we'll take our back plate, push our striker in, push it down a little bit so you can get your back plate started. And then what we'll do is we're going to push in on this detent, or extractor guide rod, slide that up into place like that. And that's it. Now we can put our barrel in. Put our guide rod in. This is the Springer Precision Guide Rod Tungsten one. It's super heavy, helps with recoil, love it. Put our cap back on for our threaded barrel. And then install onto our grip module. There you go, function check, and that's it. Um, I like to do this every now and then because a lot of stuff gets inside there, um, which pre prevents it from firing properly sometimes. So 
Um, doesn't hurt. The more you know, the easier it is to maintain it. Uh, I hope this video has helped. Thank you very much for watching.